If you were around in 1992, you surely remember the meteoric rise of Mortal Kombat. First introduced in the arcades in October of that year, its blood and fatality shocked the gaming world. The first time I saw it, it was surrounded by teenage kids basking in the electronic glow of heads being ripped off and bodies being burnt to a crisp. And I fully admit I was one of them. While Street Fighter 2 had lit a fire in me for fighting games, the extreme nature of Mortal Kombat was a thrilling twist on the genre. Every uppercut and roundhouse spewed gobs of blood from the challengers, and once a fight was over, you got a chance to gleefully murder your helpless opponent. Over the next few months, the crowds grew larger and Mortal Kombat became an arcade sensation. It was only natural that those people would want to play it at home, and in September of 1993, Acclaim and Midway came together to release it on 8 and 16-bit platforms. Whether you had a Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, Game Gear, or Master System, there was a version for you. Luckily for Sega fans, the Genesis release was not censored and featured all the blood and gore of the arcade original. Sadly, Acclaim had decided to ship this version on a 16 megabit cartridge, making its conversion from the relatively massive 62 megabit arcade version incredibly difficult. There were a number of cuts made to the graphics, animation, and sound that resulted in the Genesis version being quite a bit watered down next to the original. That didn't sit well with a lot of Sega fans, and a group of modders got together to make the Genesis Mortal Kombat a much better experience. In this episode, we will take a look at their work, how it compares to the original Genesis release, and determine if it's worth your time. Hope you guys enjoy Mortal Kombat Arcade Edition for the Sega Genesis. As I said earlier, the original Genesis cartridge was a decent size at 16 megabits, but the arcade ROM was nearly four times larger. To combat this, the developers at Probe decided the first thing they'd cut were a ton of sound effects. And let's be clear, I mean a ton. Nearly all the voices from the arcade are gone, and what is there sounds completely different. The announcer does the bare minimum in the Genesis version, simply saying fight before the match and pretty much nothing else. Pull off a fatality or flawless victory and you get nothing saying that after the match. The game is eerily quiet compared to the coin op. Scorpion does have his iconic get over here scream, but Raiden lacks his voice when he does the torpedo. But the audio also suffered a bunch of changes to what is actually there. Projectiles, death screams, and other sound effects really come off in contrasting fashion to what you heard in the arcade, further distancing its authenticity. And it's those differences that receive a huge amount of attention in the new Mortal Kombat Arcade Edition. From what I can tell, pretty much every sound effect in the arcade has been added back here. The original announcer is back and he does an excellent job on everything from announcing your pick to letting you know you scored that fatality. Raiden's hilarious torpedo scream is back, and all the other wonky sound effects in the Genesis original have been either tweaked or outright replaced entirely to be more arcade accurate. There are now an additional 80 plus sound effects in this edition. While I understand the original developers at Probe needed to work within the constraints of the time, this really does go to show you just how much of an impact cutting out sound effects can have on a game. Sometimes a well-placed voice or musical cue can be every bit as important as the graphics. Fortunately, the original music created by Matt Furness has been retained, so the arcade edition still feels unique among the Mortal Kombat ports. Otherwise, there's a ton of changes and additions in this one, so let's see how these improvements turned out.
Scorpion wins. Fatality. Scorpion wins. Another area where major compromises were made were in many of the ancillary animations. Most of these were cut out entirely in the original port. The monks clapping in the background, Shang Tsung's head moving and his clapping after the match. There were also a number of art assets missing in the Genesis original. The pit was completely barren of gore and many other stages had similar cuts and simplifications. Mortal Kombat Arcade Edition attempts to put much of this content back into the game and it does a very nice job overall. After match animations are back, the pit and dungeon stages are full of gore and dead carcasses again. Pretty much every area has received some form of addition or change, almost all of it for the better. There are also a few changes to the sprite work. Scorpion and Sub-Zero now have different stance animations and Goro has been completely redone from the ground up. Many of the fighters have tweaks and changes to their portraits, animations, and colors as well. These changes really add up when you consider them all and do indeed bring the Genesis version more in line with what we saw in the arcade. There is of course some remaining dithering thanks to the lower color palette of the Genesis, but overall the changes in the arcade edition are very welcome and make this version far more appealing. The Genesis original actually played fairly well, but the team responsible for Mortal Kombat Arcade Edition wanted to go that extra mile and improve the gameplay as well. They made tweaks to the timing to bring it a more accurate arcade feel. Special moves seem snappier and fatalities come off without a hitch. Reptile is here as a selectable fighter and he has the moves of both Scorpion and Sub-Zero. As a special bonus, Ermac makes a showing similar to Akuma in the Street Fighter series. Go the entire game without losing, and he pops out after you defeat Shang Tsung. Be aware this dude has some skills, and will likely rip your head off a few times before you best him. The original Genesis version also had a hidden menu where you could use cheats, and those options are available right from the get-go in Arcade Edition. You can change everything from the stage you start on to getting rid of continues. Overall, these changes and additions add a ton to an already solid visual and sound hack. You not only get a superior presentation, but it also happens to play better as well. As with just about any other work like this, you need to find the proper ROM version to do the hack. Head on over to romhacking.net and download the files you need, and then use the online patcher to get the job done. The file you end up with will be 32 megabits in size, or twice the original 16 megs. Despite its problems, I had always considered the Sega CD version of Mortal Kombat my favorite of the 16-bit releases. I can now honestly say that this is the one that takes the crown. Aside from the changes I presented here, there are a load of additional modifications I didn't spotlight. There is a new SRAM feature that saves your winning streaks, a new quick reset, changes to the startup and ending sequences, and a training mode. 
I mean, this really goes beyond your normal hack job and really adds some meaningful material that really shows off that the Genesis could have done a port a hell of a lot closer to the arcade original. Of course, back then, ROM chips were much more expensive, so developers were far more restrained in what they were able to accomplish. Still, you have to love that projects like this exist and come through with something well worth playing all these years later. While many may ask why bother when you can just play the arcade version in MAME, it's always nice to see console ports get improvements that can be enjoyed on original hardware. I really do hope to see more stuff like this in the future. If any of you talented folks out there are taking requests, I'd love to see someone take the Genesis port of the Punisher and add back in all the stuff cut out of the retail release. That game deserved so much better, and I just know that Genesis could have done a lot more with it. As for Mortal Kombat Arcade Edition here, I really am impressed with what this group accomplished and fully recommend you give it a try. The people involved in this project have my thanks and appreciation for a job well done. It would seem the Genesis still does, and I'm confident you'll feel the same. I'm Sigalord X, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.